Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do another Blender tutorial, kind of a 3D fractal, instances on instances. It's kind of like uh, another abstract animation. It's pretty easy to do. It just takes a few geometry nodes and kind of recursion on those geometry nodes to kind of get that fractal effect. Let's jump right into it. So we're going to use the base system. We're going to geometry nodes. We're going to use this cube. That's fine. That can hold our, our system. We're going to delete the cube and we're going to do an icosphere. So essentially all we're going to do is just instance icospheres on the icospheres and we're going to do some normal mapping to push them out and kind of get some cool motion so this this resolution is great we're going to do instance uh i guess maybe it's uh points on mesh or mesh to point same thing and you want it on the verts i think that makes the most sense yeah it looks good enough and we can say join geometry and this is going to be the main trick so we're going to say instance on points to the points they're going in here and then we're going to instance the same icosphere maybe we'll add a reroute node here pull this down and as we kind of scale it we keep it nice and clean if we can and then this scale is going to want to be decreased so say a value node and then make it like 0.5 does that seem reasonable maybe even less maybe 0.25 not it's too little Let's say 0.4 cool so now we need to move it out and push it out on the normal so we're going to do this we're going to do a translate instances so translate instances here and we want to move it on the normal of the mesh capture attribute has to be before we do the mesh points on that same path so i guess it has to route the geometry through this way so if we have it on this one even though it basically should be the same thing I don't think it's going to work. Yes, so that's the answer. So make sure when you're doing the, um, the translation, it needs to be flowing the geometry coming in. That's going into the meshing, that's going into the instancing, and that's how it's going to make it flow correctly. So it has to be the data for the points right here itself. It's not the instance data, which I guess is going into here. And I guess it's ending there. That kind of makes sense. Geometry nodes can be a bit tricky sometimes with the flows. Cool. So now we have the main effect right here. And we can actually group all of this and to put it into one thing. So this is going to be one recursion of it. Going to grab all of this and do control G. And we're going to take the value node and put it in the scale. There we go. It's no longer needed. That's fine. That's fine. Tab to get back out. And we can say uh, uh, vert instance. And then I think if we just do this, shift D. So now we have just that instance data, which is then going to go into, I think, here. Pull this geometry in, put that in there. And now we have it doing some nice recursion. And then we can make this even smaller if we want. Is it working how I think it's supposed to be working? It's looking like it's not. We're slightly off. Let's double check this. So what we want is to take those instances. That's the output. Perfect. And that should be the top part. Becoming the points. Which I guess this should be flipped. So it's the geometry. Okay. Let's say this. And there we go. Now it's good to go. But let's rename the group. That way we make sure it's more clear. So to change the name, we've got to go back into the group. And we know the top part is going to be... The top one is two instance again. And this is what we instance. There we go. Nice. It's done. 0.5, maybe even less. 2.4 and this should be the translation's not enough for the vert the normal that's still going in cut that uh, vector math it's at a scale and let's say the second one is this is uh, instance size and then this is going to be 
what's that called? It's gonna be um, uh, offset or like normal scale. It should work. Then here, I think we need to have as it's coming into instance for the points. This needs to be realized. So it's realize, realize instances. There we are. Now it should be working. You can offset them. Perfect. Nice. Let me do this one more time. Shift D to what we instance again. It's going to be this. Uh, I think actually what we should do is pop this out. We can do a transform geometry. We're going to change this up a little bit. This is coming in here. And then we're going to scale this. So we'll do a distance size. And then this can go right here and cut this. And then now it's inside the same thing. It should be OK. So now we have the basic shape set up. I've kind of worked on these node groups to make sure they're all kind of making sense. I had to change some things around to make it a bit more consistent. Essentially, inside each node group, we're going to basically do the same thing. Actually, I think I can change the order of these, right? Yeah, that fixes it a lot. Yeah, it looks way better. That makes way more sense. OK, we're taking in the instances and then we're going to realize them to make sure we can capture the normal positional data of all of these different little points. That's so we can uh, translate it out on the normals to make sure we have this kind of little like fluffy uh, icosphere kind of effect. And then from there, we're kind of using those points on each kind of set of points, essentially, to instance more icospheres. And so we're pulling in the same data and we're kind of keeping it all inside this, this node group to make it easy to recursively do. So if we mute them, we can, kind of, we can, we can work backwards and see what we have. Originally, we just have this. In the first one, we kind of instance the same thing, making them a bit smaller. It's procedural right here where we can kind of shift this value to shift the effect. And kind of after that, we have the same thing again, then one more time. So the cool thing about this is we can move them and they're all kind of like tracking on the different icospheres themselves. So we have a different slider for each of these different kind of like fluffy uh, icospheres. So we can actually use this to animate all of them. So this is really convenient and easy. So we can say 0.5. I guess if they're all zero, they're all just locked on. Maybe that's the easiest way. <laughs> Let's leave it all on zero and they kind of are uh, clustered in. So a really cool thing I saw for animations, which makes a lot more sense to me, at least for my brain, is we can essentially, uh, I'm first just changing the scene. I'm gonna do 60 FPS. So right now, if you pull on a scene time node, we have the frame data. So if we know we're going from 0 to 180, the length of our scene, I guess what we can do is put in here in the input system for group input. I guess we go here, plus input. Click here, integer, boom. And we can call this uh, number of frames. So we know we have 180. Nice. So then if we have this, we can do a divide, I guess math. We take the frame number divided by this, divide. It's now going to give us a number between 0 and 1 for the overall scene time. And so what can that be used for? It can be used for animation. So if we use a float curve, we then pump this value into this value and pump this here, here, and here, what do we think is going to happen? We know we're going in the scene, and it's going to go from 0 to 1. This is the float curve going from 0 to 1, and here is, is the, the normal scaling. Let's find out. Wow, we got an animation. It's all being moved. And what's cool about this is we have the float curve, which means we can adjust the float curve like this, and then we can have a cool loop. Look at this. So easy. Two clicks. We can use this float curve to kind of make it have different types of motion. It can be linear. It can be whatever we want. So right here, basically the easiest part of the animation is done. 
if we use the float curve and as we change the number of frames, we can use this right here to change the frame. So let's say we want to say 240. Now we say 240. It's all going to move perfectly. So we have a loop. It's done. Easy. This is a really powerful technique I saw in uh, one of the BlenderCon videos, but perfect, you know, symmetrical movement isn't always fun. So I think I'm going to add some noise. So inside of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another noise uh, translation. So I'm going to do this after we have the scale. So then we're going to do, I guess, the translate instances. And we're going to do a uh, noise texture. This goes into here. And then we got to do a vector math. Minus 0.5 keeps it centered. And then we're going to do, I think, 4D. We can also take this W value so we can put it here to here. And we'll say this is called uh, noise W. Nice. That'll be useful to make sure we can have it loop. And then we have the, the noise W there. And then we're also going to do uh, scaling. So we can say a vector math. Shift D here. Boom. Scale. And then I guess it just can be here. Noise scaling. Tab back out. They all have the same thing. Now we have the same float curve we can use for all of them. We also could change it to have multiple. But let's just make it easy. So this is the same float curve. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to do the noise W. I guess they can use the same one. That's fine. So let's just see what happens. Let's push play. Wow, it's crazy. It's zooming around. It's like a, like a virus or something. Uh, it's a little too much noise for me. So we can change the scaling. And then we can change this scaling, let's say a value. And then let's make it. I don't know, like 0.2. It's all moving out, moving back. This is basically it. This is the animation. Play with these parameters. You can kind of stack different types of noise, different types of everything and it will change depending on how you want it to look. Augury.